In iOS 17, SwiftUI makes it incredibly easy to have custom scrolling animations for your scroll views. Let's have a look at a very basic example so you understand how to build these animations. And then you can let me know via a comment below the video if you're interested in some more advanced examples of these scrolling transitions or animations. So I've already prepared a starter project here and in there I have a scroll view with a for each of some preview items. These items are a very simple struct that I declared with a title that's just a string of row one, row two, and so on, and then a SwiftUI color just so we can differentiate them on the screen. And right now I'm only showing the item color and I will build this out with you in this video. So first of all, I want them to be much larger in height just so we can actually see the scrolling animations in the preview. So I will just give this a frame with a height of, let's say, 300. That should be good. And then let's also overlay the title on here. Not entirely needed, but it just makes it a little uh, yeah, easier to understand what's going on, which row is which. Once we have that, let's add some corner radius to these items. So I will just give them 16 points. And then let's also add some horizontal padding perhaps. And with that, we already have our items set up and scrolling around here, you will see that well, this is pretty easy actually. So let's have a look at how these animations work now. There's a new view modifier called scroll transition. And there are a few different overloads where you could specify different transitions for the top leading element, which would be row one here and the bottom trailing element, which would be row three, the green one down here. But we will just be using this simple one where we get an effect and a scroll transition phase in here. And then in this closure here, we can apply some modifiers to this visual effect to build exactly the effect that we want. So just use the dot syntax that you already know from SwiftUI, and then you will already get a list with a bunch of different um, effects that we can have. So for example, we could add a scale effect where we say if the phase is identity, identity is basically an element in the middle that is not being transitioned in and out of the scroll view right now. So if it is identity, I want the scale to be one. Otherwise, let's scale it to 80% and you can already see this in action. So Row one and row two are currently in the identity phase because they are not transitioning in and out of the screen. But row three is in the bottom trailing phase basically. And it is transitioning into the screen right now. So you can already see the scale effect in action here. The ones in identity are regular scale. The ones outside are smaller. And then you can of course also implement some more sophisticated effects. So for example, we could now add an offset here. So we could say that we want to push things out of the screen at the top towards the right side and into the screen from the leading side or the left side at the bottom. Now it's a bit harder to do this um, just with, with a ternary operator like this. So what I will do instead is just create a new function and I will of course, that's just funk in Swift, and I will call it offset for a phase, and the phase is a scroll transition phase, and this thing will just return us a double, which is then our X offset. And in here, we can just switch over the phase, and here you can see the three different cases. So there's top leading, going out of the screen at the top, identity in the center of the screen, bottom trailing, moving into the screen at the bottom. And this is labeled top leading and bottom trailing because you can of course also have horizontal scroll views in SwiftUI, not just vertical scroll views. So all of this works exactly the same if you're scrolling horizontally. So we could, for example, say for top leading, I want this to be minus 200. For identity, I don't want an offset at all. And for bottom trailing, I want to have 200. And then we can use this offset for our phase in here in the offset effect. And now once the preview is running again, you can see exactly what I wanted to have. The bottommost element fades in from the left-hand side, and the topmost element fades out from the rightmost side. And then of course you can chain these with all of the other different kinds of effects, with blurs, color effects, distortions, and so on. 
There's really a lot you can do with this, but it's a super simple API in my opinion. I really enjoy what they did with SwiftUI this year. So many new animation improvements, which is always good because every single app can uh, yeah, be better just by adding a few animations.